Welcome back everyone. I'm Kalani, this is World Drum Club, and in this video I'm going to be showing you ways that you can practice hand drumming away from your hand drums. We have a new patron at patreon.com slash Kalani, and he asked, can you share some ways that you could practice congas when you're away from the congas? And I thought that's a great topic, let's do it. So that's what I'm going to be covering in this video. I'm going to show you some ways that you can practice conditioning and strengthening away from the conga drums. And this also applies to other drums that are similar like a shiko, djembe, cajon, bongos, any drums that use a similar motion. I'm also going to show you ways that you can practice other aspects of drumming such as rhythm and timing. So we're going to get to that. And then at the end of the video I'm going to be talking about some ways that you probably wouldn't want to practice away from the drums things that would be better on the drums and not on a tabletop. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. Let's get right to it. I'm also going to be showing you a overhead view and a side view. So let's start here. So I've got a cajon here. This is doubling as a tabletop for right now. One of the things that you can do are simple exercises and what we could call warm-up exercises. You don't need to do these on the drum. In fact, when I was touring, uh, a lot of the times we'd have to warm up on a table, literally, just back in the, like in the green room or something. Um, so I would spend some time uh, just warming up. And one of the things you can do is a wrist down warm up, just like this, tapping. All right, so however you want to do this, I'm tapping, you know, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, keeping my wrist down and just gently tapping on the table surface. Now, if the table surface feels a little uncomfortable for you, if it's a little too hard, put a placemat down, put a book down, get a piece of rubber, like uh, you can get rubbery table uh, placemats or you know, other materials there around. So you could find something that's a little more comfortable for you. Okay, so that's one way you can do it. Now, if we up that a little bit, we could do one of the most useful and I think central techniques to conga drumming, which is the hand fingers, hand fingers technique. And I teach hand fingers. A lot of people would refer to this type of movement as heel toe, right? Heel toe. So if you prefer heel toe, which is more of a, a seesaw action over a central point around your knuckles kind of rotating, you could do that, heel toe. Or you could do hand fingers like I and some other uh, conga players use, which is more of a hand down from your elbow motion, so your whole arm and hand together, and then wrist like we just did. So one, two, hand, fingers, hand, fingers. I have other videos on that. I'm not going to focus on that. Suffice to say, that could be the warm-up exercise. So in this case, hand, hand, fingers, fingers, right, left, right, left hand, hand, fingers, fingers. Now when you do these, I recommend, and I'm not doing it right now, because I need flexibility and I don't want to be turning on and off a metronome right now, but I recommend that you also use a metronome. We'll talk about that in part two of this video, uh, but for the whole thing, yeah, use your metronome. Okay, so hand, fingers, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to do uh, just uh, right, right, left, left with hand fingers, so you can practice your double strokes. This is another great technique that a lot of people want to work on. Hand fingers on the right, and then hand fingers on the left. And then as you're ready, you know, maybe speed it up. But maintain your technique. So this is a time where you're you're not necessarily going for maximum speed, but you want to work on your accuracy. You want to work on your techniques carefully and, you know, uh, with your full attention. So some of the things you could probably do while you're doing something else, like having a conversation, watching whatever you want to watch. But I would also recommend that you spend your practice time in careful attention to detail. What am I doing? What's the result? What does it sound like? Uh, because that's all musical. All right, let's do one more kind of extreme exercise. 
And this one, we're going to hang over the edge for this. Let me show you. So this one is, is going to get your forearms really conditioned, and that is go over, let your hands fall over the edge of the surface, whatever that is. If you can do that, it's easy on a cajon. Uh, I do have to lean forward a little. And then you're going to tap, and you can kind of see that in the shot. I'll, try, I'll pull back a little bit so you can see it. Tap uh, from, keep your forearms on the top, and then tap down on the side. And this one, if you do that like in interval training, do it for 30 seconds on, maybe 15 seconds off, 30 seconds on, treat it like a workout. You will feel that so much in your forearms and that's just great conditioning, you guys. Um, it's amazing how much conditioning you can do away from the instrument. And of course, I don't have to explain to you that it's like going to the gym of course, nobody's trying to win a treadmill award, but if you work on the treadmill, you work on the stairs, you know, you do all that conditioning, when you go out, anything you do that's related to that action is gonna be easier. You'll do it faster, easier, more safely. You know, you'll just be in better shape. So these are all exercises that you can do. All right, let's move on to part two of this and let's talk about timing and rhythms. And I'm just gonna keep time myself right now. I'll count out the beat as if I had a metronome. But here's some things that you can do, and this, these are fun. So let's say you want to work on uh, basic beat, right? One and two and one and two and one and two and da 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 Well, one of the things you can do is work on subdividing. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. All right, so we do subdivisions, eighth notes, quarter notes, sixteenth notes, eighth note triplets, all kinds of subdivisions you can work on away from your instrument. No reason you can't do that. Okay, so anything having to do with timing, now that was subdivisions, so any kind of subdivisions you want, and that can get really interesting when you're mixing up like double strokes between hands and you're doing it in triplets uh, against the click. You can really have fun with that and you can dig into the rhythm. You can also work on rhythmic combinations. Like let's say I wanna do something like um, triplet, uh, double, doubles in one hand and singles in another hand. Right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. Da, 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 da. Switching. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so you can do downbeat, downbeat double. You can do single on the down and then double on the on the in between. You know, so da, 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 da. So I'm doing a single double. I can do double single. So left, left, right, left, left, right. Okay, so you can do all of that um, rhythmic development and that can include uh, speed training, right? If you wanna try to go fast, either double strokes or single strokes. Again, I recommend doing that kind of thing with a metronome uh, and not just freeform. Or play with music. That's another great thing you can do away from your instrument. Listening to music tracks is so important. So you can get the feel, you can get the sound, you can hear what the other person's doing. I think this is, you know, practicing on a tabletop or some other, uh, something that's not so loud, uh, where you're not going to be focusing on trying to play certain things, like working on slaps and tones and all that. Uh, is a great opportunity to listen to music and tune in to the sound and the feel and the groove and all that and connect with it, but not in a way that's going to bury it and cover it up because you want to hear the music. All right, so rhythm is the second part. Work on anything rhythmic, uh, including subdivisions and then anything related to timing like tempo, like speed or anything else like that. Just tune in to the beat. All right, the last part of this video, and thanks for sticking with it and making it through, 
uh, is things that you probably wouldn't want to try to practice uh, away from the instrument. Before we do that, I do want to invite you to like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications, and visit us at patreon.com slash Kalani to become a supporter of this channel. And over there, you'll get a lot more resources. We have full courses. I have special videos that are only for patrons over there. So check that out right after you're done watching this. We really appreciate it. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about in this video is things you probably don't want to practice. And the main category is, of course, tones and techniques that are related to producing the sound of the instrument, of course, because you can't do that on a tabletop. Now, you can do a little if you want to emulate, for example, uh, open tones towards the edge, right? Bass tones. You can even practice slaps carefully on a tabletop. But you know, maybe you don't want to beat your hands up that much. And are you going to be able to do a slap, really? Is it going to help you that much? Probably not, because you need the drum head to respond to your actions. So you could think about practicing those techniques, but I really feel like you can do so much else away from the instrument. Save techniques that produce different sounds uh, on the drum for practicing on the drum, all right? And I would also recommend, related to this, that you, of course, purchase, get, and play the best quality instruments that you can uh, within your budget and your means and whatever you can get. But uh, the, the more responsive the instrument is, the more potential will be there for you to produce any range of sounds and tones that you're capable of. All right, so you don't want to be limited by your instrument. That's why I always recommend people get the best instruments that you can. Uh, that makes sense for your situation and your goals. Okay, so that's, uh, that's basically it, you guys. We're going to uh, wrap up this video. So let's review. You can practice on a tabletop away from your drums. If, if the tabletop or, or whatever service is a little too hard, put something down there. Place mat, something else. Play on a book or something. Something that's going to give you a little bit of cushion. And then uh, you can practice, of course, conditioning. That's a main category. You can do a lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, in, in fact, I would recommend that you move, to, move away from the instrument to do conditioning part of the time, because it'll help you focus on that. You won't be tempted to start doing other stuff, because I know it's tempting. Uh, second big category is rhythmic development, and that includes subdividing the beat, and then working with tempo-related things, like just maximum, maximum notes. Uh, and then you can also combine those two things, of course. So you're working on conditioning and rhythm things together. And then finally, what do we not probably want to do away from the drums? Work on specific techniques and sounds like slap tones, bass tones, open tones even, because you really need the instrument to do those things. And then finally, and this is a little bit extra, a little off topic, but related. Get the best instruments that you can. Why? Because you're going to grow into them instead of growing out of them. Right? Just get the best instruments you can. What is the best instrument? If you'd like to learn more, you want to ask me questions about that, join us at patreon.com slash Kalani, where you can message me over there, and I will do my best to respond. If you have questions, go to patreon.com. If you have helpful comments, additional information, you want to talk about what you do uh, away from the drums and how you practice, leave it down below in the comments. We appreciate your helpful and kind comments down there. And there's more stuff in the description. There's some links to some free lessons that you can start right away. And I want to thank you for stopping by World Drum Club. I hope this has been helpful. We'll see you guys soon.